Hey YouTube, it's Wisconsin Shoe Guy here. Wanted to uh, talk a little bit about suede today. A lot of people wear suede for a lot of different reasons. I uh, started thinking about suede. It's actually a relatively new acquisition for me in the last 12 months. I, I found suede to be interesting because it doesn't require hardly any care at all. And uh, it doesn't require a shine. And when I travel, I don't have to worry about getting all scuffed up. Uh, so I can always have it uh, for my meetings. It just always looks good. So um, here's a sampling of some of the shoes that I have today. Um, I have the Churches. I have an Allen Edmonds, a Carmina, an Amblier, and a Carlos Santos. And what I want to do today is talk a little bit about the difference in uh, quality and a little bit about the uh, source of the suede uh, to see whether or not uh, there's a you know, legitimate difference in the quality of the material for all of them. So, so we'll start with the uh, churches. Um, you know, there's, there's some pile on it, but the pile itself just uh, brushes right off. And uh, you can see some, you know, it, it, it just brushes real nice. Uh, you know, I think it's supposed to look uh, like it's got some texture to it. And you can get it off. Sometimes I use this, uh, this was my uh, first real suede brush. A lot of people use these. Uh, which is uh, what I got free from Herring when I bought a pair of suede shoes. Uh, this one I actually bought, um, and I bought this from the Shoe Snob. Uh, but then when I ordered a pair of Carmina suede, uh, it came with this, which is really nice. It's got the wires inside, but then it's got brush around it. And you can see it actually works better. You know, what do you know? Something you spend a little bit of money on is actually better. That's a nice thing, right? So you see this. This has got... Uh, um, so it comes across real nice, but you got a nice pile. Uh, this is unlined. Now, what does that mean? Um, just to look at this real quick. If you look here, you can see this is smooth navy leather. So this is if you, if you basically what they did, and um, is this has a an unlined uh, finish to it. And um, on the inside, it's just smooth leather. So this is like a typical reverse suede where it, uh, you know, is just reversed. Now it's not waxed. It doesn't have any of that stuff on it, uh, but uh, it is a really, really soft one. Now, not all of them are, and not all of them are online, so you can't always tell, but these are online, so it's a, it's a good example, right? So um, this is a rubber sole. Um, it has a Goodyear welt, and you can see the welt on this side. Take a look at the stitch density. This is churches. They're a relatively expensive shoe. Um, I think normally they started about 550 pounds, not even dollars, but um, I was lucky and I got these from Harrods on one of their super sales. So then you have this one. This is an Allen Edmonds. Uh, this is part of their Mass Drop Chukka series, um, and I actually got these for a very inexpensive amount, which I, I won't even say. I got them on eBay on a blind bid. And I got them for so little because there's damage to one of the other shoes, not not this or not the other, <laughs> the left shoe. And uh, somebody had accidentally cut it and they'd cut it while it was like this. So there's like a puncture hole that goes through either. The challenge that I had and the reason that I haven't fixed it is because it's about this thick. It's about as thick as this brush here. And so it's really, really unnoticeable. It's right in the middle. So there's no, uh, there's no real foreseeable damage. It hasn't uh, gotten worse or anything. Now this is also reversed. Um, so this is smooth leather, but it's, it's Nubuck, right? It's not, uh, uh, it's not like a smooth, hardy leather and, uh, really, really soft. Very, very nice stuff here. Uh, feels really good. Um, also good your weld. You see the stitch density on the two, um, is very, very close. I would almost venture to say that's about the same, right? Um, now you see there's the no warranty mark, uh, and that's because this was, you know, a re damaged return, so, which is why I got it for, let's just say it was less than $100. This is uh, Carmina, and uh, Carmina, this is um, one of their um, split soles. Uh, we would call it like a V-tread, so they, in the factory, they actually um, do the leather sole and then cut out the, uh, the, the leather in order to put the rubber insert in, or in this case, looks like it was a whole rubber insert across the whole shoe, and then they put a leather piece on top here, which is interesting. Uh, but uh, real nice. Um, this is a uh, Norwegian split toe design. Uh, Derby, though, not a whole cut version of that. And um, you can see that uh, they've got, you know, heel caps. Uh, again, this is uh, pretty nice. Feels real good. 
brushes up real nice. And, uh, but again, has the same kind of pile that, uh, that they all do. Um, so I just bought a, uh, another pair in this color um, this week at Crockett & Jones. So this is a real nice uh, standard color. I, I think that most of the suede shoes should be um, uh, three colors, right? I, I would say this color, this color, which is snuff. So dark chocolate brown or bitter, bitter chocolate brown, snuff, and then navy. That seems to be the most popular ones. I have two other colors. I have like an acorn and I have this beige, um, but we all know I'm a shoe freak and I have more than the average guy of shoes. Uh, so then um, if we look at the stitch density between Carmina and the uh, Allen Edmonds, it's quite a bit uh, denser. I'll get that closer to the camera so you can see. And again, the Allen Edmonds was about the same as the uh, churches. So you can see it's quite a bit denser than that as well. So let's take a look as we move on to the Amblier, how this is. Now the Ambliers are brand new, so they have not been worn. Uh, so it's hard to see, but it looks like that stitch density, which is a little bit messier, uh, is probably uh, about the same as the, uh, as the churches. So I'm gonna just bring this up here, look at it that way. When I look at that side by side, I'm gonna say that that's denser than the churches. So this is gonna be somewhere in between. So, Ambliers are made in Spain. Uh, this is a dress shoe rubber sole. Um, so, something different, but it is also very much good. You're welted um, and uh, pretty good. We'll talk about the upper stitch density in a little bit. And then we have these, which is Carlos Santos. Um, also good. You're welted. You can see a um, real nice shoe, real nice suede. This is going to be what I'm going to call more of like a chamois suede. It's uh, just a lot softer. Um, so, and uh, this one is uh, very similar. You can see they're not exactly the same color. Um, so this one is more of like a tobacco versus a tan, but uh, you know, you can only, like with belts and stuff like that, you can only go so uh, far. So I try to keep these two would be the same belt, uh, which uh, is actually a snuff belt. Um, and I'll do a thing on belts another day. But, um, you know, really, really soft. Uh, you know, they did a really, really good job on the uh, split toe here. Um, it's virtually hidden, uh, which is a mark of pretty high quality it's craftsmanship. Not that this isn't. This is really hard to do this way where it's got the raised piece um, in of the single piece of leather. So that's that's difficult too. Just a totally different skill. So anyway, so um, those are the, uh, the different uh, pairs. Let's take a look at stitch density of the uppers now. A lot of people talk about stitch density. The reason that it's so popular to talk about is because it's a mark of quality that you can see before you wear the shoe, and that is always hard to do, okay? So um, here you see the, the, the lining. Uh, they do have the little piping here. Sometimes the piping is uh, a, another piece that's in between, but because these are unlined, you can tell that it's not. Uh, pretty good, pretty good stitch density. Um, the stitch density here I'm gonna say is decorative, so that's not functional. The functional piece is what's underneath it. That's really hard to see. They, they hid that pretty well, completely inside. Now you have this. You can kind of see that stitch density. Also decorative and functional. See the difference? It's really, really different and uh, pretty well done. You can see on the inside, it's a lot clearer on the difference. We'll see here on the Carmina, okay? Really, really deep on the inside. Here, this is decorative, but those are pretty, pretty uh, dense for decorative. And then this is the hand-sewn piece, um, which is still pretty darn nice. It looks like it's a little dirty there. Um, you know, camera shows everything. Adds 10 pounds and it also adds 10 ounces of dirt, right? So. I'll have to work on that. I have some soy products in the background here that I can talk about in a minute. Um, Carlos Santos. Now, if you look at the uh, top stitching here, uh, which is all hand stitching, you can see that uh, um, Carmina is about twice, maybe even more than twice as dense, uh, which is just, you know, more time that they took to do those stitches. Now, the stitch itself is a different pattern. Uh, this is uh, not quite like a, uh, you know, like a like an Edward Green or, or even a uh, Ascot Con where it's got the, the, the railroad kind of stitch going around. But this is definitely a wider piece. Uh, and then this part is hidden. Here you have a, um, 
uh, you know, this is all raised. So just a different type of Norwegian split toe design. Uh, I'm sure there's a name for it, but you know, it's anybody who's actually done any research online on Norwegian split toes knows that it's really hard to find uh, the difference between an Algonquin and a Norwegian split toe. And, you know, there's, there's probably 30 or 40 different things here. Now let's take a look at that stitch density on the Amblier. It's pretty nice. You know, this is a pretty good made to order shoe. 12 to 14 weeks delivery, but uh, really, really nice detail and not a, not an expensive shoe either. Um, along the lines of, uh, you know, retail price for Allen Edmonds and, uh, you know, really, really good quality. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say that all of these are George F. Stead suede. Uh, I know that uh, that's what Carmina and Alan Edmonds use. I think as I looked at this, it said that as well. Um, I looked up the uh, the Carlos Santos and I wasn't able to tell, but um, they don't necessarily have to say it. Uh, and I'm fairly certain that Churches being right down the road from Stead is also using it. So generally regarded as one of the best suede companies out there. It's, uh, it's a really well done suede. Now let's talk about the suede brushes again really quick. You see that there's a lot of different quality, a lot of different things that you're looking for here. Um, when you have the brush and the wires um, on two of them, then I guess the only thing you're looking for really is the handle size. Okay, And you can see that the Carmina is a lot longer than the, uh, and uh, the brush though is about the, it's pretty close to the same size as the, uh, the, the Amblier. Okay. Now the Amblier is made out of Babango wood and this, I have no idea what kind of wood this is, but it's, it's definitely a lesser wood. It's not as rounded. So that would all be involved in the pricing as well. Uh, they were both uh, free. They both came with the shoes, but I think the retail on them each is around 15 to 20 bucks. So uh, the J Fitzpatrick one, which is just the wires. Uh, and I don't know if it was J Fitzpatrick or this shoe snob brand. Uh, those two kind of blend together in my head. Uh, that is just a, uh, you know, $10 brush. And this herring one, uh, while it also came free with a pair of shoes, this is probably gonna retail at about three bucks or so. Uh, last but not least, let's talk about care. Saphir makes a Renovateur spray, uh, which is for suede, uh, but it is color coded. You can get it in uh, neutral, but this is uh, navy. Um, and then this one is the, uh, the chocolate brown. I do not have a snuff yet. Um, that's something that uh, I've actually been thinking about doing. Uh, the other type of things, and this is, I, I obviously bought this with a pair of Ugg boots uh, and a long time ago, but I never knew I was supposed to replenish it every, every year. So I didn't, I just uh, did it the one year and uh, it's been 10 years and the boots are still fine. So I guess I didn't really hurt them. Uh, but um, you know, you're supposed to redo this every um, three months actually, which for me, since most of my, 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 my winter boots are, are seasonal, uh, just meant once a year, but, uh, these type of water repellent, uh, is, is, I would say not discouraged, uh, but, uh, the, uh, the renovateurs, um, do a, a pretty good job. Uh, but when I bought my, uh, MTO Carmina suede boots, uh, it came with the brush and it came with this can of unknown <laughs> suede spray, which smells remarkably like this. So I'm going to say it's relatively the same thing and, uh, call it a day. Anyway, that's um, some, uh, some ideas on suede. Hope it was uh, helpful for everybody and wishing you all a great day. This is uh, Wisconsin Shoe Guy signing off. Thanks, YouTube.